What's good football fans? Back at you once again with another video. And you know, after the showing that our team put on this past weekend, I figured it would be downright criminal if I didn't take a look at this defensive tape. Now mind you, I'm gonna look over everything, but I'm really gonna concentrate on Chase Young and Cameron Curl. I really feel like these two guys are stepping up and stepping to the forefront of this defense and leading the way. And that's not taking anything away from anybody else, including Montez Sweat, who I believe is breaking away from the pack as well. And Chase Young had one of the best defensive games that I've seen in a long time this past weekend against the 49ers. That said, let's just dive right in. Now this first play is a really good example of Cameron Curl getting in between the ball and the defender and swatting it away. This kid plays way above his experience level and he's getting better every game. This play here is a perfect example of Montez Sweat coming off the edge, doing his job perfectly, staying at home and putting his hands up. I absolutely love that and he's getting really good at this. He reminds me a little bit of Too Tall Jones with that. I mean, every just about every play that runs around his end, if he can't get to the quarterback, he stops and jumps and puts his hands up. With a guy that big and that long, that's going to be disruptive almost all the time. Now, this is the kind of play that I love to see from Cameron Curl. I mean, he starts on the opposite side of the play and reads, runs around a block, and makes a hit. Now, he's not the guy that wraps up and gets the, the, uh, the recognition for a tackle there, but, I mean, look at him come across the, the, the top of that defense and make that play. As I said, he's not the guy that gets the final, you know, tally of the tackle, but he really just reads it perfectly. I love to see this kid on the field. I mean, he's playing above his experience level easily. I mean, this guy plays like a, a three to four year pro already. And here you'll see another example of the same thing I was just talking about. Reads the play, reacts, fights through a block, makes the tackle. Now in that particular situation, he got the credit for the tackle. I love to see a young guy fighting and getting the job done. Now, on this particular play, I was really impressed at Chase Young's ability to read the play, react, and then make a tackle. Also, it should be noted that Jonathan Allen read the same play, reacted almost the same way, and also was in on the tackle. You'd love to see that from your defensive line. These guys are well-coached and just well-conditioned athletes that are you know built for this like racehorses you know what i mean now this is the play where chase young first of all dropped back in coverage and then read the play ran in and got the sack i mean this was just unreal i'm not certain how many players in the league are this talented that could do something like this he just he's a complete monster man monster it's almost <laughs> unfair to the linemen you know down here on this goal line i really love this defense they they fight and they make things happen and on this play right here you can see chase young come from his left side of the, of the line and make that play i mean he wasn't the only one that made that play there was a couple other members of the defensive line that were there as well but i mean and, and cameron curl i might add who kind of ditched his blocker and got in on the tackle as well. I just, what can you say about, about Chase Young? Now, you love to see plays like this. Uh, this is a case where Jonathan Allen gets good pressure, puts a hit on the quarterback, and causes the incomplete pass. Watch it again. Just beats his man, puts a hit on the quarterback, makes him force it. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love plays like this. Kevin Pierre-Lewis, KPL if you would. Watch him blow that fullback up off the edge over there and get the sack. I mean, just nasty. Just blows the fullback completely up in the backfield. Sack time. This play right here, more of the same. Nick Mullins almost gets sacked twice on this play. First by Montez Sweat, then by Jonathan Allen. He barely gets it away, and after he gets it away, Ryan Kerrigan put a hand on it.
You know, this season has really brought the emergence of Montez Sweat onto the football field. I mean, he is becoming a all-purpose run stopper. You know, sometimes certain things happen to teams that you just look at and say, man, that was a thing of beauty. That was this play right here. Chase Young comes off of the edge right there, and he's, he's unblocked, first of all, and gets the running back in the backfield and gets the, the, uh, the fumble. I mean, this play was defended perfectly. Chase Young is just a specimen and an unbelievably coached player. I mean, you could just see it when he steps on the field. This kid's football IQ is off the charts. Now, this is one of those plays that you really have to watch twice to appreciate. But Chase Young comes around the edge, comes around the blocker, and still manages somehow or another to put his hands on the ball. Now, this goes down in the stat sheet as a batted pass, but it was damn near a, uh, a quarterback sack and definitely a quarterback hurry. You know, just all kinds of things happening on this play as three players basically converge onto the uh, the, the, the quarterback here. Is, I mean, Deron Payne gets the credit for the, for the fumble here, and Chase Young, of course, picks the ball up and runs it in for a touchdown. But if you look back on the play, you'll see that there were several um, defenders, though, those defensive linemen that were ready for that play to take place. I mean, look at Jonathan Allen. Look at John Bostick. I mean, Chase Young just makes the play, obviously, and he's the one that, you know, grabs your attention because he got the touchdown. Now watch it from this angle. Three guys basically come up in the, the quarterback's face immediately in this play. Watch it from this angle. You'll see the, the amount of defenders that are really making Nick Mullins change it all around. Deron Payne makes the play. Chase Young picks the ball up, and they're gone. They're off to the races. Now, watch the blocking uh, on this play right here. I mean, Trent Williams gets jobbed. And watch it again from this angle one more time. Chase picks the ball up, and watch the blocking on this play. Deron Payne out front. Montez Sweat out front. Boom. Yeah, Trent Williams really couldn't do nothing. I absolutely love the way that this defense uses Cameron Curl off the edge. Watch him come around this play right here and just make that hit on the quarterback. I mean, he, he forces Nick Mullins to make the play happen immediately, and he wasn't ready to throw that ball at all. And he just lays it right on him. A couple seconds later, and he's got a sack there. Shit, a couple fractions of a second later, and he's got a sack there. Now, in this play right here, Jonathan Allen gets a good push, gets good pressure here, and almost gets the sack. I mean, just a couple of inches more, Nick Mullins had to get rid of it. Now, I absolutely love plays when this defensive line makes a push up front and gets tackles for loss. And with Montez Sweat, he is making a name for doing this, and it's just getting better. Here's Sweat again with some unbelievable pressure off the edge, comes all the way back around the edge, and then hits the quarterback and makes the play. At six foot six and 265 pounds, <laughs> this guy should not move like he does, but he does. I mean, he continues to make unreal plays week in and week out. He's a monster just as much as Chase Young is. Now, I absolutely love seeing plays like this where our young safety steps up, reads the play, and makes the interception. And I mean, just to the races now i will tell you this we got kind of lucky there that we didn't get a holding call on uh what's his name williams carter or william smith there excuse me you watch it from this angle right here and cameron curl is like a breath of fresh air for me i really enjoy watching this kid and he jumps off of the film literally on this play right here but i mean to the house he goes could that have been called a holding penalty there I'm not so certain. Maybe. Watch it again from this angle. I, I'm not so certain if that's a holding penalty or not, but that was a hell of a, a, a play by, by Curl there. Looks like maybe he got away with one. Very easily could have been called a holding penalty. Bad part is... 
I'm not even certain he needed to hold there. I think Curl would have stiff-armed him to the ground and then been gone. He had Sweat there to block as well. You know, if I had one knock for this uh, Washington football defense, it would be that I believe that the secondary should be getting more interceptions. With the amount of batted passes and swatted balls and, you know, whatever the case may be, I'm just surprised that there's not more interceptions. Which, by the way, if there were, there would be more wins as well. I know there are several people that like to point out that, you know, things would have went this way or a little bit or a little little bit maybe that way the team could be very easily seven and five eight and four um, or even better but one thing that i've seen that's really stood out really largely on the film is the amount of swatted batted passes that the defense is not taking advantage of and i'm not necessarily even going to point out you know missed interceptions that maybe could have been or dropped balls you know on the when you're on the defensive side of the ball with the type of pursuit that this defensive line is putting in to get to the quarterback or get to the running backs um it, the rest of the, the back end of the defense should be feeding off of what they're giving and those guys a lot of them you know it's several of them i should say are tall have long arms and had the ability to, 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 to leap and jump and, and swat at the ball. And the guys on the back end of the mid-level of the defense should be taking major advantage of this. One thing I want to touch on just based off of a quote I saw from Ron Rivera uh, yesterday. It would appear like there's a little bit of a spirited competition between Montez Sweat and Chase Young. Those that maybe saw the quote by Rivera you know that he referenced Allen Iverson and, and practice. Are we talking about practice here? But there appears to be a little bit of a competition between the two of them. And that's actually a good thing in my mind. Uh, I feel like that could push both players to do bigger and better things. You know, it appears like maybe like Chase Young's not going to be outdone. And it appears like Montez Sweat's not going to give in. I mean, these two guys are forces to be reckoned with on the edge of the defense, on the opposite edge of the defense. Now, interesting enough, both of these guys have been compared to Julius Peppers. I'm not certain if any team has been able to draft two players that were compared that heavily to Julius Peppers in consecutive years. One thing I've definitely noticed over the last few weeks over this four game winning streak is the defense has come together. Now, the back end is still getting things completely straight, but I really believe that Cameron Curl and Jeremy Reeves, that combination is the one that we maybe should look at for the future. Now, I know that there's no guarantee that Jeremy Reeves will, will etch his place, but I believe Cameron Curl has already done so. Those who, who read my community posts over here on YouTube will see that, you know, I put up a post yesterday talking about how I'm ready to proclaim him the steal of the 2020 draft. And I know a lot of people think that Antonio Gibson is that guy, but Antonio Gibson is a, you know, a third round pick. A lot of those guys get a lot of playing time. And to be honest with you, if we hadn't have taken Gibson, he probably would have went in the picks right there afterwards. Whereas Cameron Curl, the team kind of took a little bit of a chance with, and I feel like he might not have been drafted at all, which is crazy to think, but you know, the situation with the combine and the way that you know the, the things happened last year uh, with, the, with the virus coming up and everything, it kind of screwed over guys like him who maybe didn't have a lot of film you know, for, for teams to, to really pay attention to. And it caused him to slip. Probably cost him a lot of money too in contract. The great thing about it from, from our team's perspective is you know, he's under contract now and we got him in such a late round that they were able to get other players ahead of him that they thought maybe could have developed quicker. And here we're looking at Cameron Curl as a guy who's is right now is second on our team in tackles, but has been leading our team every week just about since coming into the lineup um, with tackles and such and was doing decently before he was thrust into a starting role. And I wanted to point out once again that I believe that he really is, you know, going to give Landon Collins a run for his money when it comes to one of those safety spots. Now, I know a lot of people think maybe we could just shift uh, Curl over to the free safety and keep Landon Collins at the strong. Well, if that be the case, then that be the case. I feel like now that we've seen Jeremy Reeves play decently, that maybe they could have a decent rotation. 
of course, somebody making the kind of money that Landon Collins makes, he should by far be the guy standing out in front of the pack. And I feel like Cameron Curl has done just as good as Landon Collins has since he came to Washington. You know, this year as a rookie for Curl. And that's saying a lot. But week after week, when I put this film on and look, since Curl has come into the lineup, he stands out. I mean, obviously Chase Young is a guy that stands out to everyone, but Curl in the secondary stands out to me big time. Maybe it's just my love affair with safeties that can open field tackle. Maybe it's just my, you know, uh, infatuation with players on the back end that can make plays all over the field. You know, we had a, a guy that was here before that could do that pretty well too, and I don't want to put um those kind of expectations on Cameron Curl because that's too much for a guy to have to deal with I just want him to bring what he's got to the field every week and from what I've seen that's a lot and it's going to help this football team a lot moving forward we all know defense wins championships and this team has proven over and over again now that this defense is built to win now of course naysayers and everybody might have a little something to say about the offense having some holes in it and you know most people probably believe that we're a quarterback and maybe a piece or two away from something over there on the offensive side of the ball let's just say they left something to be desired in this football game the defense really had to make it happen in this game and, and i kind of came into this matchup kind of knowing that i felt like this was a game that we could go as far as the defense would take us that has a lot to do with San Francisco's defense as well because the 49ers are no slouch franchise when it comes to their defense, even with all the injuries that they had. That's a good football team over there. It's well ran. It's well coached. I will say that I'm happy that our team was able to get some get back and take something away from this game after the way that they were kind of embarrassed on their own, their own field last year, you know, with a coaching staff that was in over their head and, and no longer here. But these players, they were here and they remember. And it's going to be hard for them to forget a loss like that. I felt like uh, Kyle Shanahan was kind of trying to save face this week and not give the team any bulletin board material that could come back to haunt them. Which on the face of things is probably pretty smart. This team already sees that they're being shunned by the media and not being taken seriously in most circles. And as these last three games play out, hopefully they continue to use that as fuel to the perpetual fire that they're trying to churn up. I feel like with the way this defense is playing, that there's not a team in the NFL that they can't play with. Now the offense has looked lost the last couple weeks with Terry McLaurin dealing with an ankle injury and Antonio Gibson dealing with turf toe. And we don't know when Gibson's gonna be back. It looks like Terry maybe could be back into doing things normal like this week, hopefully. Uh, we need the production from his position. They, they, the team has become kind of, you know, relying on it, but kind of, you know, depending on him to be the guy that carries the load. At the same time, they now got to worry about Alex Smith. So there's that. But all in all, I see this defense coming together as a unit. And I honestly don't see a team in the league that they can't play with right now. Maybe I'm biased. I tell you what, I want to ask everybody that might be watching this video, do me a favor in the comments tell me what you think of this defense do you think this defense is built to win now or do you think they're a year or two away that's about all i got y'all take it easy peace